Well, Taylor, don't worry. You've had a lucky afternoon anyway. You've managed to have the lines for a little bit and see that skittish leopard. And so not too bad an afternoon anyway, even if you don't find them anymore. But I'm sure with the drone, Connor will get onto it and find them fairly shortly. Now, Ellie Bull is loving a buffalo thorn that he has now found. And it amazes me when they eat this tree because, well, if any one of us had to go and grab that tree like he's doing now, you would be cut to ribbons. There would be bits of you all over that tree and lots of blood and gore. Yet this elephant has absolutely no problem feeding off it. He just grabs trunkfuls, shoves it in, and then those big plate-like teeth grind everything down and he can make use of those very tasty, very nutritious leaves. Now those particular leaves, even us as humans can eat. They're quite tasty. They have a sort of sweet taste to them. And if you cook them, it can be a sort of substitute for spinach. So it's a good leaf to have and well if you're an elephant I suppose it tastes much better than dry grass and that's why they'll deal with all of those thorns to be able to feed off it. The nice thing about a buffalo thorn is that the thorns are actually very small in comparison to things like the acacias. So you can't really even see the thorns there but they're growing at the same point as where the leaves are. There'll be one straight thorn and one hooked thorn and so for an elephant with a very thick skin like it's got on its trunk and those big teeth and thick palates that it has these thorns really aren't too much of a match and don't actually do too much you can see though they still chew quite delicately when they first put it in their mouth it's a slow chew that they have it's not like the grass where they shove it in and it's quickly and then it's down when it first goes in it's a slow bite down and once they crush all of the thorns they then are able to swallow those leaves But it is such a beautiful afternoon, just sitting in this late afternoon light, even though it's windy, it's just sort of calm and peaceful. And this Ellie is the perfect foil for that. He's kind of just sort of represents the afternoon, really. It's just peaceful and quiet and beautiful all at once. You can see there's still the deep blue skies of winter. And the marula trees, it's interesting that they've still got leaves. They're normally one of the trees that will lose their leaves fairly early on. You'll find a situation where they kind of get blown off and the cold temperatures, they very sort of, don't not very resilient to those cold temperatures. And you'll find the tree, the leaves blow off quite quickly and it gets very barren fast, but they're still clinging on and we're in the middle of July. And so the fact that they've still got leaves is quite impressive. I'm quite surprised by that. It's probably also to do with the fact that we had quite late rain and so they got enough moisture later on to be able to sustain themselves and to keep the leaves. And you'll find that the leopards are actually going to probably start steering clear of marula trees unless they really have to because now that the leaves are all gone it doesn't provide any shade at all. And you'll find that during summer they use the marulas quite a bit and in the winter they actually start moving away from them a little bit and start to try and find other trees to utilize if they're going to lie up just for shade. If it's something to do the kill well then a marula tree still does fits the bill because there's often a lot of them around in this area and they're the perfect shape to hang carcasses and to be able to then lounge in the tree itself now i'm going to try see if i can just roll forward slightly So, Carsten, all the way from denmark you want to know how much a big male like this elephant would eat in a day well he'll eat about four to six percent of his body weight four percent in the summer months when leaves are a little bit more nutrient rich and he's able to then find quite sort of moisture filled plants and they will be able to absorb a lot more from that and as things then dry out and the grass gets dead you'll find in the winter months he starts to eat close to six percent of his body weight now an elephant bull of this size is probably weighing i would say anywhere around five tons so ten thousand pounds so he's going to be eating six percent of that which is close to sort of 600 pounds a day so close to 300 kilograms of food in a day which is a serious amount of food when you think about it if you imagine having to travel around and con collect six or 300 kilograms of grass and leaves or 600 pounds of grass and leaves in a day it would take you probably all day to do that and it would be a tedious job and and that's why you find elephants literally just feed all the time so even when moving to areas if they're going for water they will still take the opportunity to feed off a tree just like this elephant bull is doing now 
just gonna see if I can roll forward a little bit further. I'm hoping the signal won't drop off. It shouldn't because we're a little bit higher up. But it's just quite cool if we can get a little bit closer and then you maybe, just maybe, the way that he's feeding, he might open his mouth enough that we can actually try and see if we can't see those teeth. So that's why I was trying to get here because he's kind of cocks his head up when he's feeding and sometimes you can actually get a sort of view of the teeth inside and you'll be able to see those big grinding teeth that I'm talking about. No, not today. <laughs> So, John, you want to know if elephants have enough saliva in their mouth to start off the digestive process, much like us as humans do. Well, John, after putting my mouth, I mean my hand, inside an elephant's mouth a few times, I definitely have not put my mouth inside an elephant's mouth because that would just be weird. But I've put my hand inside there and it, well, it's pretty much similar feel to what you would feel inside of our mouths. It's lots of saliva inside there particularly on the tongue the, the sort of roof of the mouth is very hard and not too much saliva there but around the tongue areas it is quite full of saliva and so yes i would imagine that is the case as soon as they put that in they start to produce saliva that will help with the digestive process and help to lubricate that food as it then travels down into that massive big vat of a stomach that they're able to then digest this food It is amazing just how he goes through it. Now this plant will start to produce tannins, so in time it's going to start tasting a little bit more bitter and then you'll find he'll leave it alone. And that's why plants don't get absolutely wrecked by elephants all the time. You'll find that they go and feed off a plant for a while, but as that plant produces the tannins so it becomes a lot harder for the or a lot more bitter and you'll find then the alien will move away and it means that that plant then doesn't get destroyed completely by a single elephant he's just not opening his mouth enough for us to be able to see his teeth i was hoping i was hoping he was going to be able to sort of open his mouth a little bit wider that we would be able to see them because it's not every day that you do but you can see every now and then he's smelling us as well he'll pretend like he's feeding and male elephants often do this it's displacement behavior so they pretend like they're actually eating but meanwhile they'll smell and just kind of size you up and watch you and then once they realize that you're not a threat in any way they'll go back to feeding so you'll find every now and then especially after a mouthful he just gives us a little sort of scent and that's because the wind is blowing quite strongly from our left to our right and so a little bit of our scent will be blowing onto him and that will be sort of making him aware that there's probably humans here as well as just this vehicle remember that these animals don't associate these vehicles with humans even though elephants are incredibly intelligent they don't associate it as the same way as if I was standing here on foot but the smell is something that that doesn't change and so when they do pick up that scent they sometimes just kind of have to sniff again and make sure that everything's okay and that there's not a human lurking close by isn't it amazing just to watch his trunk at work? So, Michelle from Johannesburg, from my hometown. Hello, Michelle. Hope you're having a good day. And I wonder if you are still on school holidays, because it is school holidays at the moment. And you want to know why an elephant would have a tail, or any animal for that matter. Well, if you watch that tail, you'll see that it swings around quite a bit, and so it moves a lot. And that means that that tail is an effective fly swatter. So it's going to be able to keep lots of insects away from the rear end, particularly because these animals, and all animals in fact, other than humans, don't wipe their backsides. And so there will be a buildup of fecal matter which will attract flies and various other insects it's also an area with soft skin and you'll find things like ticks and other parasites try and head towards that area and so the tail is an effective means of keeping all of that at bay and it keeps all of it sort of away from that area also what it does is it will just close over where their anus is and make sure that 
there is nothing getting inside there and keeping it a lot cleaner now that's for some of the animals other animals things like leopard their tail and cheetah their tails have a different use they are all there to help with balance so the cheetah because it moves so fast has a flattened tail towards the tip and that means that it's able to then sort of balance itself when it's running and turn on a dime even when it's doing incredible speeds of 100 kilometers an hour things like a leopard when they're climbing that longer tail just helps to balance as it climbs and just to shift the weight slightly as they go upwards same with something like a monkey in terms of the way that they move around in trees as well so that's the thing with tails is that it just depends on the animal they'll have different uses but most of them is to try and keep insects at bay and to keep that area that sensitive area closed up and away and to stop infections and things like that developing around that area but you are an absolute delight, mister. You have been phenomenally good to us this afternoon. He really hasn't moved at all, and he's been so, so relaxed. He hasn't really gone too far, and he's very comfortable with us sitting right next to him, which is quite interesting. So, Jackie, you're asking if he will find the rest of his herd. Well, Jackie, when it comes to elephants, particularly males of this size, is that they actually don't live in herds. These males will only sort of seek out herds when they come across them and if there's a female in heat then they'll actively try and find those females and seek them out other than that males of this size have been long kicked out by the females of their original herd so when they reach sort of 12 to 15 years old they then get pushed out and they're made to go and sort of walk around on their own and from there they'll then grow and get big enough to be able to then establish themselves and to be able to compete with other males to mate so he actually doesn't have a herd of his own he's only just going to pick up scent of herds and maybe females that potentially have some sort of have come into estrus and they can then mate with them and so if there is a female from the tracks that we saw just now and he's scented okay there's a female here that's ready to mate then he will actively follow and try and join that herd other than that he might just pick up okay it's a herd that i've come across already today i'm just going to leave them and i'll carry on doing my own thing much like what he's doing now but the tracks that we saw back there are quite fresh so i wouldn't be surprised if the this herd is somewhere up in front um, he doesn't look as though he's in too much of a hurry to catch up with them so maybe he knows there's no opportunity to mate and that's why he's not too phased right well